Well, I always feel it's hard to overstate the importance of leadership. It's extraordinary the impact that leaders, good and bad, have on the communities they are uh, meant to be leading. There's a difference between leadership and management, and it's not necessarily a difference of, of personnel, it's a difference of role. The same person could be a great leader and a great manager, but the role is different. The role of a leader is to uh, provide a vision uh, for a community to try to realize, a sense of direction, um, a, a, a set of goals and purposes, and to inspire people to believe in it and to pursue them. The role of a manager is to make sure everything's working so that actually comes to pass. And you know, some people are great leaders and poor managers, and there are great managers who aren't very good leaders. They're, they're different sorts of roles, and some people are, can be both. But in an institution, the really critical role is of a leader, because communities on the whole do need to be brought together uh, in, to some sense of common purpose. I mean, it can arise spontaneously. Uh, in the organization, but where you have a, an organized institution like a school, uh, the, the leader influences it in almost every way through their personality, their outlook, their disposition, and how they connect to people. And there are all sorts of different styles of leadership. Sometimes, if, you, if you're just after efficiency, if you just want to get the job done, then you may need to go into command and control mode. You know, and that happens in a lot of industrial processes. You know, I know you've got some great ideas, but honestly, just do, do it like this. Um, but if you're interested in innovation, and if you're interested in creating a culture of growth, then the job of a leader isn't to tell people what to do always, it may include that, it's to create a climate of possibility. You see, I, th I think, sometimes people think of organisations as if they are um, mechanisms of some sort that you have to just maintain, and, and if, you, if you get the mixture right and you get the adjustment right, they'll just hum on interminably into the future. But human organizations are much more like organisms. They're communities of living people. They are, the, the, the institution of a school is not the building, it's the people in the building, and, and, and they don't actually need the building. It's the relationships and the patterns of behavior among them that makes it what it is. That's what culture is, it's patterns of behavior and belief. And uh, like any other living organism, uh, human organizations, uh, have to live symbiotically with their environment. What I mean is, you know, a successful plant is adapted to its environment and it not only feeds from the environment, it enriches the environment that it depends upon. That's the basic principle of ecology, that it, it helps the environment to flourish and the other uh, organisms in the environment also are mutually beneficial. Well, a great school is like that. A great school that's connected to its environment can bring the whole place to life. I've seen you know, dismal neighborhoods being brought alive by a brilliant head teacher who comes in and a great school that flourishes and connects to the parents and the cultural organizations around it. And you can see equally poor schools draining the life out of a neighborhood where people are bereft of hope and optimism and it, you know, that's the worst school in the neighborhood. Nobody wants to go there. And what it also suggests, just to extend the analogy, is that organizations and organisms flourish under certain conditions. They need congenial conditions. So the role of a leader for me in education is to understand what the conditions are in which people flourish. The conditions, like a teacher understands, the conditions under which kids will learn best. And those conditions are not normally sitting down for eight hours straight doing multiple choice tests. Uh, they include getting up on your feet and moving around and dancing from time to time. And, uh, getting involved in projects that interest you and having your curiosity peak. That's why I say teachers are enablers, not just instructors. And the role of a head teacher is to create the conditions in the school where teachers can do that. The role of a district is to create conditions where the schools in the district can do that through collaborating. And the role of a government is to create conditions where districts can do that. That's what I mean by the ecosystem. But if we forget that the whole point of the system is to help the students to learn, then the whole thing gets turned upside down. And then you end up with a situation where the whole point of education is to get higher up the piece of league tables and that's when it all goes off the rails I think.